I wanted to learn more about shooting on 16mm film, so I talked to an Australian cinematographer named Lewis Potts. He shoots 16mm film and his stuff looks amazing. While talking to Lewis, I learned so much and wanted to share some of our conversation with you. Enjoy. I first want to talk with you about this psychological component here with film because obviously you can film on digital and make it look like film and they do this on huge budget movies all the time they do this on music videos all the time this is a real thing but when you're actually shooting on film there's a difference on set right and you talked about this in one of your videos what is it like shooting on film for you for the client for the people on camera what does that do psychologically for people it, i think it just focuses everybody Everybody is because if you're shooting digital, you just you're just rolling. Sometimes you're just rolling. Take, let's just let's just keep the camera going. We, people don't want to cut because it's a reset time. Just keep keep rolling, and then the camera's just going for 20 minutes sometimes. Um, and if you're doing that on film, that's that's costing you thousands of dollars. So you you rehearse a lot more. People have forgotten how to rehearse shots now. You move the camera, you rehearse it in, you do it, let's do it again, let's do it again. The actors want to do it again because they know, or the, the musicians or whoever it is. If you're doing like a branded job, uh, they're the kind of ones you would do on film really, uh, or like some, some parts of it, multi, multi-format. And if you don't have a, a, like an SR3 or SR2, the RE ones, or one of those that has a video tap, if you're shooting on like a Bolex or something, that none of them have video tap, so they can't, none of the clients can see. The band can't see how they looked or how their hair looked, so they can't view it back. There's probably this trust that you have to have in the DP. Yeah, just yeah. To know every, the, B, the, the DP says everything's good and you can trust me. <laughs> I guess that's how it used to be and that's how DPs were thought about and then they were, they were put at such a high rank for that because of that, because it was all up to them really. We've entered this interesting time where I hear the word content all the time. Content, content, get out that content. I don't associate that with film. I, f I see film as special. It's not just content. And um, I'm just curious about the value that is placed when you're shooting on film, on what you're shooting. I mean, I think it is becoming a little bit more content now because um, it is becoming a little bit more accessible than it was five years ago or more. And People are, myself included, people are doing a shoot, a branded shoot or something, and you'll have, they'll be shooting digital, but they'll want a, they'll want a Bolex or some sort of just 16 mil, they want a 16 mil rolling in the background, um, getting a few bits here and there. So in the edit, they can splice in, or I mean, sometimes they just do the thing where they overlay the effects and try and do it. But sometimes you can convince brands to shoot on film. Um, but if you are doing it, like that they, they do want to even if they, they they trust you and they say yeah let's do the film they will want to shoot everything on digital as well as the film just in case because they're always so scared i think someone starting out into film and as someone who's never shot film before i have some some specific questions here first on average how much from your experience how much do you think it costs per minute to shoot 16 or super 16 millimeter film Okay, so there's a few factors that go into it. Um, you have to buy the film stock, which is, I'll talk in Australian dollars first, and then, because I don't really know what it, but I'll work it out at the end. So you have to buy the film, which is about uh, $70 a roll. And you can buy that from B&H, you can buy it from a lot of places. Um, that's for a 100 foot roll of film. Um, and then you shoot the film, or you get it delivered to you, so there's a delivery cost there, you shoot the film, and then you send it to a lab to get uh, developed, which is about 80 or $90. And then they will either send it on to a scanning facility or they, the lab might scan it as well. Then the scanning facility will cost you about $60, $70 for that 100 foot roll of film. And then that's either put on a hard drive and sent back to you, or they've uploaded it to the cloud or something. Um, and then, yeah, so all up, it's, you've got buying the film, shooting it, sending it off to get developed, then they send it to get scanned, then the scanning cost, then it gets sent back to you. And so it's about 250, 300 bucks for a hundred foot roll in US dollars, that's about $200 for two and a half minutes. 
Okay, so your experience here, I'd like to hear, there's a three minute or three and a half minute music video. How many minutes of film are you shooting to make sure that you've got enough to edit? I mean, it depends, it depends what your budget is, you know. <laughs> it's what you always say to the people, but sometimes you can, I've done say a three minute music video. Um, there's one on my channel with the guy in the piano. He's sitting in front of the piano. We shot that on 10 minutes of film. You didn't, for a music video like that, you don't just go through the whole song. Oh, let's just go through no, the whole no, thing. No, no. no. <laughs> you, you, you get the bits that they, you, okay, I want, you know, this 20 seconds here of you singing this part of the song. We practice that bit, you, you, whatever you're doing. And then, uh, and then you roll that and then, and then even syncing it is hard as well because you've got no sound. So you just, you, you're looking at the lips or you're looking at the, the drummer or whatever it is that you're doing. You could potentially spend thousands on film to shoot 10, 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. I guess it depends what you're shooting though, really. But you can, I mean, I've done more. I've done, I've done music videos where I've had 30, 40 minutes of film. Um, but, you know, for, for bigger budget ones. But you can, I don't know. I, I like, the, I like the, the challenge of just having like 10 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever it is. And then you d you're doing these just, I th yeah, we got it. We got to move on. We got to move on. And that was fine, I think. And, and then you get it back and it, it, it's usually 90% of the time it's great and it has something that you can use in there anyway. Reasons to shoot film in 2021, right now, when you can make something look good with almost any digital camera. In your opinion, why should somebody shoot on film sometimes? I think if you've never done it before and you've grown up in the, in the digital sort of age, just for the experience to do it and, and see what it's like, even for how it was done for a hundred years before, it's, it's quite different. I think, I think a lot of the times when you're shooting film, you're shooting, you're shooting sort of music videos or branded content and those kind of things. And a lot of the times bands don't want to look like commercials. They don't, bands don't want to look like a polished TV commercial. They want the, the, the video to reflect the music that they play. Um, I mean, maybe if you're shooting huge pop stars, they want to look like a commercial, but a lot of the bands that I shoot music videos for, they don't want to look like that. Uh, what are some things you do to make your film look so good? Because I've seen a lot of stuff that doesn't look good. I, a, bi a big part of it is, I, I, talk to, I talk about it in one of my videos, and a big part of it is shooting for the grade and on, on, on digital, you, you're usually underexposing or trying to make it look a bit moody. And on film, you have to overexpose it a little bit. And then when you get the film back, you got to bring it back down because it doesn't, it doesn't hold the um, underexposure as well as digital would. It thrives in the overexposure and then bringing that down. Um, so that's, what I'll, that's a big part of what I would do to, to make the film look as rich as possible. Um, but other than that, I mean, you're still, you're still kind of doing the same thing, really. You're still just doing, it's a bit harder and it's a bit slower because the focus is quite hard to do. You know, if someone's moving, I'll try, you try and avoid, sometimes you've got a small crew, you're avoiding having someone coming towards you um, or pushing into them or pulling away. You're, you're doing a lot more. If you're doing that, you're, you're really setting it. You're really getting your mark and someone's, someone's gonna do that on the lens for you. If somebody is starting out on film and they've never shot film before, uh, from your experience, how should they start? Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say just go straight out and buy a camera on online. I, I would say there's a quite the, most rental houses would have not, not most, but some rental houses would have them now. I'd probably go just rent one, buy a roll of film. You know, you might lose three hundred bucks at the end of the day, but It'll be worth it just to get, hire a camera, buy a roll of film, shoot that, get it developed, see how it comes back, see how you like the experience, and then see if you want to buy one from there or if you want to continue it. Because some, some people don't, they, they think they might like it, but the, it's tough. It's quite hard to shoot. Um, and they might be used to shooting digitally that it'll be hard to transition to do that. And it wouldn't fit their job needs that they want. Some people just might, might want to do it, but they need to realize what, what the kinds of things they actually shoot. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely don't just don't buy a camera straight out. Go, go and hire one and give it a, give it a go first.
If you want to learn more about shooting on 16 millimeter film, check out Lewis Potts YouTube channel. He is very knowledgeable and you'll learn a lot on his channel. But don't subscribe to Epic Light Media. Remember, we're a channel in decline. We're not trying to grow right now. Also, this is an exclusive club and we don't want to invite any other people to the party.